I'm Carol Webb, the CEO and founder of CharityGlobal.com. Charity is the one site that helps you assess what your nonprofit needs and then brings together free resources and learning tools from the top experts in the field. If you've watched our previous two videos, you know a bit more about what a feasibility study is and what they entail. The next question you have to answer as a nonprofit is do you do the feasibility study process yourself or should you spend the money and invest in a consultant to do it for you? As a consultant, I know that most nonprofits really don't understand what a consulting firm will and won't do and what they bring to the process. Good consultants can be really helpful, and I've seen situations where they were critical to saving not only campaigns, but the nonprofit. But that's not always the case, and firms vary dramatically in approach and quality. But here are some important things that you should consider before pulling out your checkbook. The first is a misperception about what the purpose of a study is. Most nonprofits executives think that the purpose of a feasibility study is to open doors to major donors and gain buy-in into the plan, basically cultivation. This is not, however, what capital campaign companies truly believe. A campaign company will insist on a study to test if they can take you to campaign immediately or if you need to address issues before they can be successful. Think of it as an insurance policy, since more than 50% of campaigns nationally fail to reach goal each year. It might seem like a subtle difference, but it is important. You may be thinking about launching your campaign with a study, but the firm you hire is most likely testing whether or not they can work with the donors you have that are cultivated and the plan that you've developed. Many firms already know what the result of your study will be before they talk to the first donor. The interviews give them context, but they really don't add that much value. The bottom line, a good percentage of the time, you can determine if you're ready to go to campaign by answering a few simple questions like the one in our free Ready to Grow assessment. Hiring a firm without asking those questions internally first could be a gamble. The second misperception is about what a study costs. Most people know that studies are expensive if you hire a consultant. But what they don't know is the cost is almost high, always higher than just that primary fee. If you don't have the internal capacity to run a campaign, professional companies can be worth their weight in gold. But plan on spending twenty-five to thirty thousand on the low end, and somewhere between five and eight thousand in additional expenses for those services. Most companies don't have local staff and they'll need to fly in and stay in a hotel with a rental car and a daily per diem. These can add up quickly. So make sure you know all in costs before you sign the contract and make sure you monitor them weekly throughout the study process. Set a cap or a budget that must be approved if they plan to go over it. Another misperception is that consultants open doors to large donors. Many nonprofits make the mistake of thinking that the consultant will use their connections to bring in big donors that you've not been able to bring in yourself. For this reason, they may be worried that their donor list will grow if, and it will be better if they hire someone who raises a lot of money locally. It's why many nonprofits do hire, hire local contractors. However, the expectation couldn't be further from the truth. Large donors give to nonprofits that they trust and that have value for them and their philanthropic goals. They don't give to consultants because they know them or even respect them. You have to do the door opening and you have to do the cultivation on your own. If you can't get the consultant in the door, they won't open it and they won't use all their goodwill and their relationships until permission has been given. And while a firm can pull a plan together to present to a prospective donor, the one thing they can't do is create a donor base that's ready to give major gifts. The number one reason that campaigns get a no-go recommendation is because the donors just aren't ready to give or they don't exist. So what happens if the report says you're not ready to go to campaign? I don't think any organization hires a firm for a study thinking that they'll tell them that they aren't ready to go to campaign. 
While most companies won't share this, the reality is that 30 to as high as 70% of feasibility studies result in a no-go recommendation. If this happens to your nonprofit and you hired a firm to do the study, they'll produce a report with a list of recommendations and things that they may have discovered. They'll then even offer additional services to address those issues at an additional fee. If they're minor, they'll want you to do them before your campaign, or they may want to combine them as part of the campaign. They may help you fix them in that process, but know that it will extend the campaign time and may cost a significant amount of money to do this. What many nonprofits don't realize is that one of the biggest dangers of doing a study before you're ready is that campaign firms will insist that you do another study once the issues that they've identified are addressed. They might call it something else, but the reality is most firms feel like they need to gauge investor interest and get a campaign goal that's attainable before they agree to move forward. You will be writing another check for twenty dollars to $50,000 for your new study plus expenses. And what if you want to change firms? If you hire a new firm, they'll most likely insist on a new study as well. This makes it even more important that as you prepare to go to launch, you aren't wasting your money on multiple studies. You're ready. That money could be used for your campaign or your programming. The final misperception is that the person who sells you the contract is the person who'll be doing the work. Most often, the person you develop the relationship with is the owner of the firm, and they will not be doing any of the on-site work. The firm will traditionally hire a campaign director to manage the day-to-day -day work, including meeting with your donors. This is where you need to be cautious when you hire a firm. On-site by a sales office or owner is not the same thing as being run by a stranger that you haven't met yet, but are going to be put in front of your major donors. Does the director you will be assigned really have the talent to raise millions of dollars for your nonprofit? The reality is it's hard to find quality people to fill these positions these days. Fewer and fewer people want to be on the road five days a week for 10 months to a year, and campaign directors, really good ones, are hard to find. If they have any talent at all, most can find great six-figure jobs in their hometown with benefits and no travel. Some firms have great directors, but it is important to ask these questions up front about who will be on site and how long they've been with the firm and what qualifications they have. For the price you're paying, you deserve the best. I want to make a quick comment about the process of the transition from study to campaign. Every campaign company's goal is to take you to campaign. It helps expand your mission and helps you get the money that you need. But it's important that you know that if you do get a recommendation to move forward with the campaign, you're going to need to have at least $150,000 to $250,000 in the bank to pay consultants for fees and expenses up front. Many nonprofits believe that the fundraising dollars will pay for themselves, but some unethical consultants will lead you to believe that you can pay as you go. While it is true that the money that they raise will include funds to cover their expenses, the cash flow for most campaigns will not start to come in for six to nine months, and even then it might be restricted. If you don't have that much up front, don't start with an expensive firm only to run out of money three to four months into your campaign. The bottom line is this, it's easy to know if you're ready. While we can't guarantee 100% we can uncover all of the issues that may be out there, a quick assessment can tell you if it's too early to send out that RFP. At Charity, our free Ready to Grow assessment will show you where your nonprofit stands. You and your donors will be glad you took it and took the time to find out. I hope this video was helpful to you in determining how you'll launch your next campaign, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Email me directly at carol.wick at charityglobal.com and let me know what other tools we can provide you to help you grow your mission.